Hey there and welcome to Matt Scratch. Today I'm working on a turbocharged 2003 PT Cruiser and I'll be replacing the transmission uh, solenoid control uh, gasket. Just the gasket, uh, it's leaking right here where it joins the transmission. So this is the gasket that goes in there. Um, I'm in here doing some other stuff. It wasn't leaking that bad so I've just been keeping an eye on the transmission fluid but it's time to uh, replace it now that I've, I'm replacing the radiator right now and, and the power steering pump, so it's a good time. So I just got to unbolt this uh, bracket here for the battery box, and I believe it's four 18 millimeters right into the frame. And I, uh, I may take this hose off, I'm not sure if I'll need to. Looks like I might need to. Um, no matter what, i got to clean up this area really good. I've already degreased and cleaned this whole area. So I'll be doing the same over here once I get this bracket out of the way. So here we are with the 15 millimeter socket. That's what size those bolts are. And I think I can get in there with my impact. There we go. Okay guys, I'm definitely going to be taking the intake hose off here, but uh, I want to clean everything up real good around it first because I don't want to get any uh, debris in the intercooler either. Okay, well I got that uh, turbo hose out of the way there, and uh, you can see we have good access now. So that to get that uh, hose out of there, it's just the uh, two hose clamps, just 8mm on them, and then there's just a, a vacuum hose here and a a plug there and uh, pull that out of the way make sure you uh, especially here make sure you block that off so nothing falls in the intercooler and then uh, on each side of the turbo hose okay well it's now dark out but I'm still going here and uh, took me a long time to get that cleaned up around there a combination of uh, Varsol brake clean and uh, air gun was so built up with grease and gravel and debris in there that you'd end up filling the whole transmission full if you just took it out without cleaning up first. So I'm going to take the plug off the uh, solenoid here. It's got an 8 millimeter bolt. You just undo the bolt and it should pull the plug off with it. Just like that, see? Now we'll just wipe down in behind there. Every chance I get when I'm dealing with things like this, I clean. And actually, I can take this other plug off. And it will just allow me to pull the harness out of the way there. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts that hold in. There's one back here too. So I'm just going to do a bit more wiping here now that I got that wiring out of the way. And then... Uh, I'll work on getting that back bolt out and then I'll, I'll get back with you guys. Okay, well I'm going to get this done even though it's dark out, but I think you can see what's going on here. I've got the uh, middle one loosened off. Uh, there's no access to actually remove it. It has to stay in the unit there. So now I'm just going to use a um, ratchet and a socket to loosen off these end ones and uh, then the whole unit should pull up. we just got to be careful not to uh, get any dirt inside the transmission when we pull it out of there. I'm just going to use my nut driver as an extension and I'll break it loose with my little ratchet here. Okay, it's moving and I see a bunch of gay TF running out the back side there. So I was wondering how much higher the uh, transmission level would be make sure you have a drain pan underneath so the bolts are the same length on each end I'm not sure about the middle just yet okay so it should all be loose now I'm gonna try and remove it out that way like out down here so I'm just gonna try and do it in one fluid motion so So now I've got to try and get that gasket out of there and uh, basically clean everything up there 
without getting any contaminants in the transmission. Okay, well I'm going to go away for a bit here and just wait for this to drain off. Okay guys, so I know you can't see very good, but what I did is I lowered uh, the right side of the car down about 3 inches. And what that did, like I have the wheel off anyways, and I have the car kind of up on blocks. So I just lowered it 3 inches, that allowed a bunch more ATF to drain out, and then when I jacked it back up, now the level is down below the uh, surface here. So now I just have to absorb up that excess that's sitting there, that's puddled there. And then I'll be able to remove the gasket, clean this all up, and put the new gasket in. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So because that is an aluminum gasket surface, I'm going to use a plastic razor blade and just scrape that little bit of gasket off there. Now a final dry wipe, and then uh, i got to kind of clean up the other half. Okay guys, well there it is with the new gasket on. The gasket kind of holds onto a couple dowels in there, so it should stay put. I think I got it down on the dowels now, so put the other two bolts in. And I'm just going to bring them down evenly with the nut driver for now. I actually haven't checked the torque spec yet, but I am going to go check it. just want to get it snug down. Okay, I just looked up the uh, torque specs, and it's 110 inch-pounds, which is equivalent to 9.1 foot-pounds. So, I'm just going to give them a little more snug with my uh, nut driver, and call it good there, I think. Just putting my wrench on each one actually, since I can only get at the back one with the wrench. And I want it to have them all equal. Now of course, there's a big mess of ATF back there, but that shouldn't matter. That gasket should seal wet or dry. So, uh, I just gotta rinse that out of course, but otherwise all good. It looks like a successful install and hopefully it's all sealed up and I never have to go in here again. These things do fail sometimes, so you could follow the same procedure for a failed one and just, of course, install a new part back on. This one still seems to be working well, so it's just a matter of replacing the gasket, which was very cheap. Okay, guys, so it's actually the next day after doing this repair here, so everything went smoothly the gaskets in there and everything and i just wanted to make clear that you don't actually have to remove these parts like the uh, radiator and the, the cooling fan and all that can stay in place um that's for a separate repair and actually replacing the radiator and power steering pump but uh if you're just doing this repair all you've got to do basically is take the air box out the battery out the uh the battery tray mount that mounting bracket there that I took out and uh, you need to remove the turbo intake pipe here and then it's just a matter of getting cleaned up really good around there and, and other than that it's a pretty straightforward uh, and easy to do uh, thing and then just be aware that you might actually have a leak here between this plastic and the housing or between that plastic and that tin cover it might actually be there and it's really hard to tell when there's oil everywhere so uh, now that I've replaced that gasket, I'll be keeping an eye on it to make sure it was indeed the gasket that was leaking. But uh, if this is leaking, I don't think you can buy that gasket even that goes in there. So you'll just have to buy a, a complete new uh, transmission solenoid uh, control here. But I just got to put the plug back in. Like I said, I wanted to make sure any solvent that was in there was evaporated out. So I'll blow it out with the air gun once more and then put some dielectric grease in there. And then you don't want to tighten that up too much. That can just be barely snug down with the nut driver. It's the actual uh, plug will hold itself together basically. And it's not something that's going to rattle loose anyways. I do hope you found the video helpful and informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And have yourself a great day.